What's up guys and welcome back to my reading show for the new subscribers. I'm your host Andrew and thank you for joining me today. The next story is The Harlem Tragedy. Let's begin. Harlem. Mrs. Frank has dropped into Mrs. Cassetti's, Cassetti's flat one of one flight below. Ain't it bent, bent? said Mrs. Cassidy. She turned her face, probably for her friend, Mrs. Frank, to see. One eye was near, near, nearly closed with a great greenish-purple bruise around it. Her lip was cut and bleeding a little. And there were red finger marks on each side of her, her neck. My husband wouldn't ever think of doing that to me, said Mrs. Frank, concealing, concealing her NY. I wouldn't have a man, declared Mrs. Cassidy, that I didn't beat, that didn't beat me up at least once a week. Show, shows her things something of you. Say, but that last dose Jake gave me wasn't no homo homophatic one. I can't see stars yet, but he'll be the sweetest man in town for the rest of the week to make up for it. This eye is good for theater tickets and a silk shirt waist at the very least. I should hope, said Mrs. Frank, assuming complacency. That Mr. Frank is too much of a gentleman ever to raise his hand against me. Oh, go on, Maggie, said Mrs. Cass Cassetti laughing and applying wish hazel you are only jealous your old man is too frapped and slow to ever ever give you a punch he just sits down and practices physical culture with the newspaper when he comes home now ain't that the truth Mr. Frank certainly peruses, peruses of the papers when he comes home, has acknowledged Mrs. Frank with a toss of her head. But he certainly don't even make no Steve O'Donnell out of me just to amuse himself. That's a sure thing. Mrs. Cassetti laughed and contented contented love of the guarded and happy Martin. With the air of Cornelia exhibiting her jewels, she drew down the collar of her kimono and revealed another Treasure, treasure, bruise, marin colored, aged with olive and orange. A bruise now nearly well, but still no memory dear. Mrs. Frank capitulated. The formal light in her eyes, in her eye, softened to envious admiration. She and Mrs. Cassidy had been chump chumps in the downtown paper box factory before they had married one year before. Now she and her man occupied the flat above Mame and her man. The four she couldn't put on airs with Mammy. 
Does it hurt when he socks you? He socks you. Asks Mrs. Frank curiously. Hurt. Hurt. Mrs. Cassidy gave a soprano scream of delight. Well, say, did you ever have a brick house fall on you? Well, that's just the way it feels. Just like when they, they are digging you out of the ruins. James got a left that spells to Mar Martinis, Martinis, two Martinis, and a new pair of Oxfords. And this right. Well, it takes a trip to Coney and six pairs of open work, silk, lice, licely, silk, lisle. Thirds, to make that good. But what does he beat you for? inquired Mrs. Frank with wide open eyes. Silly, said Mrs. Cassetti. Indulgently, indulgently. Why? Because he is full. It's generally on Sundays nights. But what cause do you but what cause do you give him? persisted the seeker after knowledge. Why didn't I marry him? Jack comes comes in tank, tanked up and I'm here and I who who else has he got to a right to beat? I just I would just like to catch him once beating anybody else. Sometimes it's because supper ain't ready and sometimes it's because it is. Jack ain't particular about causes. He's just luscious till he remembers he's married and then he makes from for home. It does me up. Sunday nights I just move to the furniture with sharp corners out of the way so I wouldn't cut my head when he gets his work in. He's got a left wing that jars you. Sometimes I take the count in the first round. But when I feel like having a good time during the week or want some new rags, I come up again for more punishment. That's what I what I done last night. Jack knows I've been way way wanting a black silk waist for a month, and I didn't think just one black eye would bring it. Tell you what, Mac, I'll I'll bet you the ice cream he brings. It tonight, Mrs. Frank was thinking deeply. My Mart, she said, never hit me a lick in his life. It just like you said, Mommy, he comes in grouchy, grouchy, and ain't got a word to say. He never takes me out anywhere. He is a chair warmer, chair warmer, at home for fair. He buys me things, but he looks so glum about that. I never appreciate them. Miss Cassidy slipped, slipped an arm around her chum. You poor thing she said, but everybody can have a husband like Jack. Marriage wouldn't be no failure if they was all like him. This discontented, discontented, this discontented wives 
you hear about what they need is a man to come home and kick their slats in slats in once a week and then make make it up in kisses and chocolate creams that would give them some interest in life what i want to what i want is a masterful man that likes you when he's jacked and hugs you when he's ain't jacked preserve me from the man that ain't got the scent to do neither mrs frank sighed the hallways were suddenly filled with sound the door flew open at the kick of mrs cassetti cassetti his arms, Mr. Cass, Mr. Cassidy. Cassidy. His arms were occupied with bundles. Mummy flew and hung about his neck. Her sound eye sparkled with the love light that shines in the eye of the Maori maid when she recovers. Can see, can see, can see, can see, can consciousness, call, recovers consciousness in the heart of the world who has stunned and dragged her there. Hello, oral girl shouted Mr. Cassidy. He shed his bundles and lifted her off her feet in a, mi mi in a mighty hug. I get tickets. I get tickets for Barnum and Bileys. And if you will bust if you will bust this drink of one of them bundles I guess you will find that silk waist why good evening mrs. Frank I didn't see you at first how's Allmart coming along he's very well mr. Cassidy thanks said mrs. Frank I must be going alone up now marked I'll be home for supper soon. I'll bring you down the pattern you wanted tomorrow, mommy. Right, guys. The first part of this story is over. So let's continue tomorrow on the second part. Thank you. Bye.